there's always a right way and a wrong way to do things. Seems like I invariably figure out sometimes how not to do something before before doing it. There's been this uh, meme that I see on Facebook every uh, few days about kind of smelling the roses and enjoying life and not uh, not stressing, th stressing things too much. But as you might imagine, there's one item in there that I have a, a little bit of an issue with because it says, eat the delicious foods. And I thought about making a or my attempt at an infographic about that. Of course, delicious food it is, <laughs> is delicious, and it is um, so objective that it would be tongue-in-cheek just to even kind of do it in the first place. I have some uh, few little clips I grabbed as I was going through the Andromeda strain if the copyright doesn't get me, I will have those at the at the end of this. It's the usual suspects as far as there's a number eleven, there's people in a space state underground space station, there's a town that's been hit with some mysterious illness that's caused people's blood to turn to powder but what occurred to me as i was looking at this thing was the 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 similarities of the sets and locations and everything uh, how similar they were are to star trek which would have been wrapping up at about 1971 i believe And all of that relates to the New World Order, which I hesitate in a way to even bring up because if you're interested and in, you've been watching and looking at some of the information and hopefully evolving as as I have uh, it's I mean you talk about overkill it's just like but anyway my take on where we are in history right now brings me to the recent Pope visit and uh, he made it a point to say that he comes in his name and uh, something like with the good and the good faith of the Catholic people or something. And it, 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 there's two, two verses in the Old Testament that talk about if someone comes to you by any other name and then I know there's a, a more probably well-known one in the uh, New Testament. I couldn't find it today, but basically it says if any man come to you by any other name something about reject him and 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 don't pay attention to what the, in other words it's that's the negative um i tend to believe that uh there has been a a long time struggle between good and evil and it's the people trying to to do good and, and be kind and you know I guess be kind of a consciousness of being accountable to something not that you even need something to be accountable to to do the right thing except as that might relate to 
to reincarnation, which part of me tells me that's a very unlogical way to be um, looking at things. Uh, but um, the other part of me, it, it makes perfect sense, and I, regardless of some sort of logic or anything that could, and I'm sure there is available that could, uh, you know, disprove that. Um, we have to remember that everything in nature recycles and I believe the quote is for Einstein, the energy can neither be created or destroyed. Um, there are studies available where they have measured a person's, uh, I guess, you know, like their body mass at, at death, and it shows somewhere around three ounces leaving the body. Um, I, I think that's what makes humans unique and in trying to make sense of this experience of life and, and how it might have developed in this and that. Uh, I wonder why it is if there's so many of all these other things and we're in this long-standing fight and all that and there are beings that are probably superior to us in every way. Uh, what, why is it that we've got that God thing with, with having a soul? Um... I also want to mention something about the military because I feel sure there's been people that have gotten the wrong impression by maybe some of the things I say or some of the things I post. Um, uh, I, I tried to join the, the military twice. Well, I, I, the first time I decided against it and the second time I told them, the truth about being allergic to bee stings and that disqualified me. Uh, but when I believed that a country, you know, meant something for the people and that in this case, <clears throat> Americans mattered to their government and the military was there to protect us in foreign lands, uh, you know, from threats. But if you ever take a hard look at the real history of wars, uh, it's pretty much always an arranged thing. And... It's always started with a, a false flag. This is all public information going back before the Gulf of Tonkin and Vietnam. Um, it seems like our country was headed in the right direction initially, even though, I mean, forgetting that whole, you know, uh, Native American Holocaust thing for a second, it seems like we were headed in the right direction as far as rights and ownership and, and that sort of thing. And um, this relates again to the military because this is also public information. Uh, 
in 1861, um, they, uh, they had a meeting of some congressmen, and it was on Christmas Eve, so only about four or five people were there, and that's when they, um, wait a minute, I think, no, that was, I think that was 1913 when they came up with the Federal Reserve But in 1861, we were just America. Um, looks like I got too much light going. Let me see if I can. Um, in 1861, we became the United States of America. The United States of America is the name of a corporation. You can stand on your head, you can go outside and poop in a hole, you can laugh, you can cry, but that's what happened. And that, you can look that up. And um, at that point, the country no longer was a country that had its citizens in its best interest. This is not really, you know, I mean, this isn't like some highbrow Mensa, uh, whatever fancy discussion. This is pretty easy to understand. They made the states into a corporation. Therefore, the government's primary interest slowly but surely became profits and profits over people. Um, and that's what all of, every bit of it, the White House, the news channels, um, sports, I'm sorry to say for some people, and of course pop and TV and, and, and all of that sort of thing. I don't know if it was always as blatant as it is now, or if it's just that the more you become aware of these things, the uh, the more you the more you see it. Um, I think there's probably some some reason why stars like Miley Cyrus and there have been God knows how many others. Uh, first appear as a as a child star and then later do all these things that they've done on on screen um, of course I never I, I never watched that that show um, it's one of those things you can't help but to be aware that um, it existed uh, I hope I haven't been too far all over the place. Our high school union in New Brighton, South Car uh, Pennsylvania, is coming up in on Thanksgiving weekend, and I'm looking forward to that. As I mentioned once, it was it's just been neat to kind of reconnect with the, uh, some of these people. I mean, and it, you know, it's not like you talk all the time or anything, but there's something about someone you knew in, you know, second or third grade and that you still can can see them. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of magical. And uh, what was also kind of neat for me was that uh, two of these girls I, I, I believe they were both cheerleaders but I had um, I, I wasn't ashamed of it either I mean I just had these major major crushes uh, on them and um, something kind of embarrassing happened one time I guess it's funny now uh, but the Some of my friends, um, uh, 
I think Ron was a was a ringleader. But they um, they took up donations and they gave it. I believe the, I don't know why I remember the amount, but I believe I think it was five sixty five. <laughs> they gave her <laughs> to to somehow or another, some, you know, got the word to me. You said something to the effect. <laughs> Up to the effect that she was interested, uh, I think we had by that time progressed beyond going together, which we used to do in, uh, I think, on into middle school, where it didn't really, didn't really mean much of anything. Uh, I, I don't know why th I, this memory is coming to me right now, but I used to ride to the this roller rink with uh, one of my deceased friends from high school, David Spiegel. And um, this other fellow who wasn't in our class, and then there's probably some other people who were maybe that were there. I don't remember the specific details, but he drove this Porkskins van, and um, I know my dad always called him Porks, called, referred to this man as Porkskins. <laughs> I think, I don't know if anybody, other people did or not, but. Dr. Dutton, thank you. Will you follow me, Dr. Levitt? And may I have your glasses, please? What for? They'll be treated and returned to you, Doctor. Well, they better be, or I'll need a white cane. Who picked Levitt? You're the only one who can disarm the mechanism by inserting your red key in one of the substations located throughout the facility. Now, there's a five-minute delay between the time detonation locks in and the bomb explodes. That gives you a chance to think, and please, God, call it off. Look, I'm the new boy here. Why me? Because you're single. Should have done your homework, sport. Page 255, Robbie's odd man hypothesis. Results of testing confirm the Robertson odd man hypothesis that an unmarried male should carry out command decisions involving thermonuclear destruct contexts. Let me take a look at that. That would make it twice as hard to isolate and characterize. It'll take us 16 hours to descend through the programmed decontamination procedures on the first four levels to level five with the main labs on. Where exactly are we now? There's one way you can always locate yourself or any of this instantly. Simply by calling up projections from the electronic diagram on any video monitor anywhere in Wildfire. Views such as this. Now, this shows we're in conference room seven, level one. This ends the formal questioning. Please undress. <laughs>